Hey, a econ. Let's go over some answers, folks. See how we did. Okay. So, first question: What is the difference between scarcity and shortage? Okay. I didn't explicitly define this in any of the slides, but we did talk about it in a previous presentation for a little bit. Scarcity is every resource. Every resource is scarce. We are choosing um, which resources we want based off of different allocation methods, um, whether it's money or time in a day. Everything around us is scarce. And we, as consumers, have to allocate our resources in the way in which um, allows us to maximize our scarce resources to help benefit ourselves or our company. Shortage, on the other hand, refers to a specific commodity or a specific um, good or service that is legitimately sh we are short on. We do not have enough to meet the demand um, at all times. So all resources can be considered scarce, but shortage is when we legit like do not have enough and it is putting a huge economic strain on an economy. So we'll talk a little bit more about shortages and surpluses here when we get to our supply and demand section. Number two, what does the PIG principle tell us and how does it apply to your life? The PIG principle tells us that we at any given point always want N plus one. So N is any anything in our lives. So N could be chocolate bar, N could be number of, I don't know, trips to Chuck E. Cheese. We always want one additional unit or one additional um, item, okay? Um, just because we just, we're pigs. We want, we want as much as we can get, right? So how does it apply to my life personally? Well, when I was at the coffee, when I got coffee this morning at Casey's, I probably could have made do with a small or a medium coffee. But because I noticed that it was only 10 cents extra to upgrade to a large, I upgraded to a large and I got a large coffee. Even though I don't legitimately need to have a large coffee, I could make do with a medium or a small, for only 10 cents, I wanted to get an upgrade. Okay, that's one application. I'm sure you can think of many other applications to your life as well. What are the eight different methods of allocating resources in economic system? They're as follows. Random draw, personal characteristics, performance-based, willingness and ability to pay, first come, first served, fiat, voting, and others. And I'll talk about what each of these mean briefly. Random draw is like a Powerball. And we randomly draw and that's the person who gets it or drawing names out of a hat. Personal characteristics is when we determine who gets something based off of something they have personally. So when we're donating kidneys or different body parts, um, blood, things like that, those are all based on personal characteristics and what we have. Performance-based is based off of our ability to perform and do well, right? So who gets the first, second, and third place trophy at a 5K? The people who are in first, second, and third place res respectively in that performance task. Or who earns an A in Mr. Ramson's econ class? The people who earn 90% or more of the points available. It's all based on performance. Fourth is willingness and ability to pay. And this is virtually anything here in our American economy. Um, you'll be able to go to the store and purchase a candy bar if you are willing and able to pay for that candy bar with the $1 it costs you. First come, first serve is the fifth, and that's basically like a four-way stop or an intersection. Whoever is there first is the one who gets to enter or go through that, that intersection first. Fiat is based off of the, um, the, the preferences of the allocator, so teacher's pet, having favorites, things like that. If I choose to give my my people in the front row who are the most active participants and my favorites, quote unquote, extra candy, that is a fiat based economy. Or if your parents have preference or um, give you less chores because you're the youngest child and give your other siblings, and especially that middle child, extra chores, that is fiat. Voting is pretty simple. That's when we vote certain people into elected offices, selecting prom king and queen, all of that nature. And others would be a combination of these different methods. So, for instance, going to a popular concert, number one, you have to be willing and able to pay for that ticket to even get there. And number two, you have to show up pretty early to get the best seats possible. Okay. Uh, what is meant by factors of production and what are the different factors? We have natural resources, which are things like land, human resources, which is the labor, capital, which is different types of equipment, and entrepreneurship, which is the organization of a business. Okay. What is capital? Capital is equipment or buildings or infrastructure that are needed to um, execute a business or a um, program. And opportunity cost is the value of the next best thing that we forego in making a decision. So for example, the opportunity cost of me recording this video right now could be that I could be watching YouTube or watching um, Netflix right now. So that is the value of the next best thing when I'm giving up to be here with you all uh, right now. So hope this helps you kind of review. Let me know if you have any questions and see you in the next video.